Sunflowers, daisies, and roses It doesn't matter the day Your power's taking me over I just wanna stay away Can lie right next to you Hi, so basically, translocation is transportation of synthesized product in plant. So, transport sucrose and amino acids around the plant by using active transport. It is two directional transport of soluble organic food material from the leaf to the other part of the plants by flower. Sugar and amino acids are transported to growing regions for growth and development, while the excess is stored in organs such as roots. Now we have learned that when plant loses its water, the process is called transpiration, right? But here the question is, what is the actual definition of transpiration? So, transpiration is the loss of water vapor through evaporation from the surface of plants. This loss of water is replaced by the absorption of water from soil by the plant roots. The continuous stream of flowing water from the roots to leaf is called the transpiration stream. So, you must remember that only 1% of water is used by the plants for photosynthesis and to remain rigid, while the remaining 99% will evaporate from the leaf and lost to the surrounding by transpiration. About 90% of transpiration takes place through stomata of the leaves. It also takes place through lenticels of food stems. So, what about its importance that we have learned? Firstly, transpiration helps in the absorption and transportation of water and mineral ions from the roots to the different parts of the plants. Secondly, it helps to supply water to all plant cells for metabolic processes and produce a cooling effect in plants. And last but not least, transpiration helps to prevent plants from wilting by maintaining its cell rigidity. And every time you're with me, I'm loving it. Hey! Mm. Have you wondered what are the factors affecting the rate of transpiration? Here we go! The first factor is temperature. High temperature increases the kinetic energy of water molecules. So, the higher the temperature of surrounding, the higher the rate of transpiration. Second factor is humidity. When the humidity in the surrounding increases, then the rate of transpiration decreases. When the humidity in the surrounding high, the water vapor from the stomata could not evaporate. The next factor is light intensity. Sunlight causes the stomata to open and increase the rate of transpiration. The stomata will open wider when the light intensity is higher. In the dark, stomata close and the rate of transpiration decreases. The last one is air movement. Moving air carries water rapidly outside the stomata. When there are no air movement, the rate of transpiration decreases or stops. So, the rate of transpiration increases in windy conditions. The faster the air movement, the higher the rate of transpiration. So now, we are going to learn about the transport of water from the soil to the leaves. Okay, we start from the root, and then to the stem, to the leaves, and then to the atmosphere. Here you can see the structure of the plant, the leaf, stem, and the root. Okay, here are the process. Okay, we start from soil to the roots. Okay, 
The water is diffused into the roots by osmosis. The cell sap in root hair cells contain sugar, amino acids, and salt. Thus, it is more concentrated than the surrounding soil solution. The entry of water into a root cell dilutes its cell sap. The cell sap of the adjacent cortex cell will then be more concentrated, causing the water molecules to diffuse from cell to cell by osmosis, and then from the roots up to the stem. From the root to the stem, water enters the xylem from the root cells by osmosis. This creates an up upward force called root pressure, which helps to push water up to a certain height in the plant. However, root pressure alone is not enough to force the water to the top part of a tall tree. Other factors involve capillary action. Okay, now about capillary action. Capillary action is due to combined forces of cohesion and adhesion. Water molecules form a continuous water column in the xylem vessels due to cohesion. Adhesive forces between water molecules and the xylem walls enable water to move up along the narrow xylem vessels. The last one are from the leaves to the atmosphere. Okay, for the movement of water from the leaves to the atmosphere, uh, water evaporates from the surface of the mass of cells into the air spaces. Water which is lost is then replaced by water in the xylem by osmosis. Water vapor Hi guys, I'm Adam. As you all know, each leaves have their own stomata. So right now we will proceed on how the regulation of transpiration by stomata. So let's move on. The regulation of transpiration in plant is helped by the opening and closing of stomata. Stomata are found abundantly on the lower epidermis of dicotyledonous leaf and on both upper and lower surfaces of monocotyledonous leaf. Each stoma is surrounded by two guard cells which regulate gaseous exchange by opening and closing the stoma. So, if the stomata are open, carbon dioxide can enter for photosynthesis and water can be lost by transpiration. But, if the stomata are closed, reduce water loss which means stops transpiration and it can prevent carbon dioxide from entering the leaf. We can conclude that stomata are open during day and closed at night. The question is, how stomata work? Hmm. The guard cells accumulate potassium ions from adjacent cells through the active transport. The gut cells become hypotonic and water from the adjacent cells enter the gut cells by osmosis. As a result, the gut cells swell up and become turgid. Since the inner cell walls of the gut cells are thicker than the outer cell walls, the gut cell bend outward and the stoma opens. This is because the thinner outer wall stretch more than the thicker inner wall. What about at night? When the photosynthesis does not take place, the potassium ion will leave the gut cells and also the water will exit the gut cells too by osmosis. Thus, the gut cells become flaccid and the stoma will close.